Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of creating a 2D fighting game in Unreal Engine 4. My name is Wes and I've been taking for these amazing videos so far in creating our 2D fighter, obviously using Unreal Engine. In the previous session we looked at setting up our camera. Today we're going to look at part 2 because there's a few mistakes that I made in the previous video that a few of you spotted and I want to thank you very much for that. Um, it's not that I, I knew about those issues, I wanted to really push it to, to a later part of the video. Um, but I might as well cover it now so it's all, all in one aspect. And I'm glad that some of you picked it up because that means you, you, you've got an understanding of Unreal um, and how it all works. So that, that's pretty cool. So let's just push straight into what we're going to do. So what we got up to in our last session is that we got the camera to work. When, for example, we started moving, the camera would move away. And then obviously in other segments, I'm unsure why it's not working with the other. I don't know why it just doesn't save properly for me. Okay, so we had the field of view. And then obviously when that changed, for example, when the character moved away, the field of view did adjust. Obviously, yeah, sorry, we changed the values in the previous session. That's why I looked a bit strange. So a lot of you mentioned that um, a few things that we did wrong and a few cheats that did help. So for example, I just want to shout out someone um, that gave a very good instance. So I've got this up open. Um, so um, YouTube 2K6, thank you very much for your comment. You mentioned um, the ABS value. Um, yes, this is a, a very, very important factor that I, I missed out and it's something that could have benefited everyone. So I'm going to in, I'm going to put that into this video and there was someone up just above mentioning about using, here we go, um, Hayan Nguyen, I, sorry, I don't know how to say your name, but again, you also found an error that I did that I was obviously using perspective camera um, and we shouldn't really be using that. Um, we should be using a specific camera and I'm going to actually put that into this video so you can see what we should be using in this instance. So let's just pop back into Unreal. So the issue that we had is that obviously the value here could change into a negative state. So say for example if my character happened to jump over the other character it would turn negative so therefore it would make the camera go all crazy like it did previously when we had the negative values. What we could do to stop this is that we could put values in so we can control what was happening um, with negative values. And this ABS property allows us to make sure that it's always positive. Now, if you ever get confused about some of these nodes that I use, I'll solely recommend you guys to please look at um, the documentation in Unreal. Just search what I'm, what I'm doing and you'll find out exactly what that means and what that represents. It's not that difficult. Just type it into Google and trust me, you can get a lot of information from that. But the first thing we're going to do just to test is we're going to get the character to jump. Um, and this is very easy. It's it's already pre-done for us. So we just have to throw some values in into our player controller just to get our character to jump so we can test. So I'm just going to type in jump because there's already an event called jump. Um, obviously, when you create the template, you already get one. If you don't have that, you have to set it up inside your project properties and assign that. I'm going to cast this to my 2D side scroller as we did up here, so up in this property, so we're going to cast that. And basically all I'm going to come off this node, I'm just going to say jump. And basically we can get the character to jump. Obviously we need to connect it up, so we're going to connect the 2D side scroll into here, and the object's going to be um, get controlled pawn. Controlled pawn. There we go. So basically what happens now is that if I had to play the game, my character should be able to jump now. So um, player one is viable to jump. And now watch what happens if I jump over the character. You can see that not much of the value will change, but once it starts happening between both of them, um, it starts to get a little bit messy and a little bit confusing. And also we clamped it, so obviously it's not going to change in value. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in the proper value so we make sure that nothing can go into a negative value or a negative state. So to do this is very simple. Off our controls for our field view, this one's fine. We don't really need to change this because this is this is pretty safe. Um, it's pretty foolproof, this one. But it's this one that we need to change a little bit. So we're just going to move the clamp out. And all we need to add into that one is something very simple. Um, it's not very difficult to put in this node. All we're going to do is off this value, we're going to say ABS. So an absolute float. So basically, this is saying it'll always stay as a positive value. Always. Um, it'll never change from that. So if we had to just print a string of this value, let's just take our clamp out. So we'll just disconnect that for now and we'll plug that into our field of view. 
So we can see what's going to print out from this. So if we play, you can see currently it's set to 16. And if I go out, it goes into positive. If I go in, you can see it's starting to go negative. So if I had to jump over, technically that would now be negative if I didn't have absolute in. So it would go into a negative value. We can test this quite simply by taking this out. So we unplug that and we'll plug this in. And if we play that, you can see 16 as value. If I jump over, it's now negative value. And you can see the camera's gone all crazy because now it's negative. Remember, it doesn't like a negative value. So we need to make sure that we have an absolute value where we can control it from. And as you can see, I've got this return value, which is going into the field of view. And obviously it's set to 60 and 120. Um, so obviously that's our values that we had previously. And we can see that changing. Again, we can change the multiplication. And obviously that would speed up the process. So that's setting an absolute value. So it'll stick with um, anything that's then positive, which is really good because that can help. And I can't say enough thank you to um, YouTube 2K6 for mentioning this because uh, I, I completely forgot about ABS values, if I'm being honest. And it makes things 100 times more easy. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much um, for mentioning that. So I'm going to bring our attention to the next one, which was Hein. Hein was talking about very nice, but I think you should not use perspective camera in 2D game. 2D games use paper sprites, which I totally agree with, so that when you build your background, it's going to be a problem. I think you should use ortho camera and setting a Y axis to go in and out when your character moves. So as you see, I can I, I respond back. I try and respond back to as much people as I can, but you are right. I should really be using an ortho camera in this instance. So again, this is very simple. If we go back to the map and we click on the camera, we can see it's currently spec uh, currently on perspective. So the projection mode is currently set to perspective view. We're going to change that to orthographic and you'll notice that it looks completely different now. It doesn't look the same as if we had perspective. So you can see there's a difference in, in zoom and how it looks in, in orientation. But don't forget orthographic is nice and flat if I remember correctly. Obviously once you change the width value obviously that goes out and in just like it would have done with our perspective. Now we have to toggle these values and we also need to get that value. But this means we need to tweak our camera settings just a little bit more with some settings. So we're going to get rid of the field of view. But in this instance, we actually want to grab the author width. So if we had to grab off the camera component, we're going to say get author width. You can see it's exactly, oh sorry, not get, it's set, sorry. Set author width. And it's pretty much the same principle of what we did with the field of view. So we just plug those in so we can see the values happening. I'm just going to plug that into here. And if I plug that value now into the author width, things are going to look a little bit strange because if I play, remember previously we could see the characters. That wasn't a problem. We could see that. And now technically I am moving. So if I click in there and I hold the button down, you can see the values are changing, but the camera isn't because my clamp is obviously on. So I've got this clamp here, which is clamping 60 to 120. Now the author works completely different. You can see it's a much higher value here to just see this amount of space. So if we have a look and we're like, okay, so if say for example, that was currently 800 and I changed this to 10,000, for example, just to test, compile and play, you can see I start off with a hundred or uh, sorry, 800 ortho. And if I start moving, it doesn't go up in value. The reasoning behind that is pretty simple because this multiplication of changing this value is way too low. It's a very, very low value. So if I had to change this to 10, for example, compile and play, you can see it's now completely changed. We now have 3,200 in value. And if I start moving, we can see that the value does change for when I move. And then obviously, depending on how far I go, will depend on the ortho on how far that camera will zoom out. So it's all about tweaking here, guys, of what you think is, is beneficial to your game. So this is starting at 1600. And again, there's 800. And then if I come back on myself, it starts to expand itself. And this way it stays positive. So if I jump over the character, you can see it's still staying in positive And the camera is still moving with our character wherever he is on the map. So again, we can limit this. So I don't want it to go to eight, sorry, to 10,000. That's just silly. I'm going to put it to maybe 5,000 value, compile and play. So we can see that the values are changing. It will stop at that value and then pull itself back to 800 and vice versa. So you can keep doing it again, depending on the value you keep putting into here will depend on 
the zoom out speed and stuff that you have. So you can, again, control what you want to happen when the characters are moving out of view with the camera moving with the character. So again, I want to thank those guys that mentioned that. This is just a quick video to cover that information that some of you said. And I greatly appreciate all the feedback, guys. I'll, I'll look at your comments. If I think I've done silly, I'd mention it and then I'll put it into the next video to fix it. Um, so if any of you have any other suggestions that will help the community, and if you think I've made a mistake somewhere along the line, please mention it. I take criticism very well, um, and I'm glad that people are, are observing mistakes and, and even informing me about my mistakes because I'd fix that. So again, thank you very much, guys. Um, I'm going to call that a session, a nice little quick one, nice 10-minute fix-up on obviously setting up our cameras correctly. The next series we're going to look at would be, sorry, not next series, the next video is we're going to start setting up our second player uh, so he can start moving about. We're going to set the keys a little bit different for him. So that way you can get your friend to move with you or you can just do it on your keyboard by yourself. And basically you can start making a little local multiplayer game between yourselves. Thank you very much for joining me. If you've really liked this video, don't forget to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you really, really enjoyed this video, don't forget to share this with your friends. And yeah, please, if you've got any more questions, make sure you comment. And I'll try to answer as many as I can um, whilst I have a bit of spare time to, to reply back to your comments. Again, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Goodbye.